What's up guys, Arden here with Yellow House Ariel, and today we're going to be talking about which micro SD card to use on the DJI Inspire 2. There's a lot of chatter online about different problems that can arise from using different cards or using different speeds of cards, and we're going to clear some of that up. So DJI has a list of approved micro SD cards for the Inspire 2. They include manufacturers SanDisk, Panasonic, and Samsung. Okay, I'm just gonna do this in one take, so we're gonna roll with it. Faster cards cost more and they are harder to find. You can get some really big capacity cards or some really fast cards, and as you'll find in this video, it doesn't make that big of a difference. I was inspired to do this video, firstly, by a bunch of people asking which card they need, which one they have to use with the Inspire 2. I promise you anything U3 or higher will be more than sufficient. Second, folks occasionally have issues with jittery video or corruption or corrupt photos like these ones that we had on a card, but these problems are not caused by the SD card as long as it is from a reputable manufacturer. I got the V60 card here off of Best Buy, so I know it's not a problem. It's a real Lexar card. I walked into Best Buy and bought it, and if you're having Having corrupt files or jittery video or, or compression problems, it's not the microSD as long as your microSD's file system is intact and you've formatted the card. Mainly, they don't affect video at all. Having a super fast card or having a medium sort of up-to-date current card will not change the video performance of the, the DJI Inspire 2. Having an old card, a slow card, will affect things, but video onto the micro SD card from the DJI Inspire 2 is 12 megabytes per second or 100 megabits per second. U3 is 30 megabytes per second rated, so approaching triple what's required by the Inspire. If you have U1 card, that's only 10 out of 12, so you would cause some problems there, but a U3 card is what you need. So you have to have a micro SD in the drone in order to record, unfortunately. The micro SD is a mandatory requirement in the firmware. According to DJI, that's for backup purposes. Uh, the Cine SSDs, the very expensive solid state drives, are not required, but you need to have one of these even for photos, even if you're recording ProRes or RAW, or even if you don't have anything, you're just shooting at H.264 or stills, you have to have a micro SD in the drone. There are older SD card classes, including class 2, 4, 6, and 10, and now we see what are called UHS classifications, which are stylized as a U with a number in them. So they either have a 1 or a 3 in that U, but both of those cards, however, are only what's called the UHS-1 spec, which is the bus. It's how the card communicates with the computer. UHS-1 uh, cards show a Roman numeral. They show an I. They show 1 on the card. And you can actually have cards that have the Roman numerals for 2 or 3 on there. Those are a different bus. It's actually a faster card. But just because you see the 1 or the 3 doesn't mean you have a UHS-2 card or a UHS-3 card. So all those cards are UHS-1 and we'll call them U1 and U3 because U3 is the speed rating and UHS is the bus. They're different and the marketing is not clear. It's kind of like USB 3.1, 3, 3, Gen 1, Gen 2. Anyway, under the UHS-1 bus, cards max out at 104 megabytes per second. That's the maximum that we can expect from your average UHS-1, U1, or U3 uh, card like these. There's only one card I'm using in this video that is a UHS-2 spec that allows for more. So if you're anything like me, seeing a U with a 1 or a 3 in it makes you think the card is a UHS-3 card. That's, hello? That's not the case. UHS-2 or UHS-3 cards are a little bit different in that they use an additional, I don't know, they use more pins, up to 17 total. So you'll see them on the back of that card right there. You see that second row along the bottom. You'll see that on a full-size SD card, and you'll see that on micro SDs as well. Those pins enable faster communication, and UHS-3 allows for communication up to 624 megabytes per second. So you can get a lot faster card with the UHS-3, but they're more expensive. The reason those pins are important, the Inspire 2 only has the first row of pins, kind of like this. It doesn't have that second, it doesn't have pins to connect with that second row, which means the Inspire is limited to 104 megabytes per second, regardless of what it's doing. So that's very important. DJI stills coming out of the X7, like this one, are 48.5 megabytes, so honestly, writing stills is more demanding on the SD card than writing H.264 video, aside from the fact that the video is a sustained 12.5 megabytes per second, and the stills are burst writes to the card, so you write 50 megs quickly, and then you're not doing anything while you're composing up your next shot. So with almost 50 megabyte files, you would think that a faster micro SD card uh, would actually perform better, but 
a card that's actually capable of up to 75 megabytes per second, like this one, it can, in a computer, take that file in less than a second. But write times for the Inspire 2, the, the time before it's ready to shoot and ready to take another photo, range anywhere from 2.8 to 3.5 seconds. I'll put some videos just showing what that looks like up on the screen here. The live feed goes completely frozen for part of that as well. So you're taking a photo, you, you click to take a picture, the live feed freezes, you get a little loading icon around the shutter button on the screen of DJI GO 4. The feed freezes anywhere from 0.9 to 1.4 seconds and then it's up to three and a half seconds before you can shoot another still with the Inspire 2. So even if the camera's panning or tilting the live feed freezes and it shows the same image for about a second while the camera catches up which is super crappy. What that tells me is that in the firmware, in the drone, in the camera somewhere, there is a delay between taking photos where it's not ready and the bottleneck is not a slower micro SD card within reason, as long as you have U3, you're faster. So the card in use on this graph, the card in use made almost no difference on how long the screen froze. And in fact, the 16 gig UHS-1 U3 card performed the best in the Inspire 2, which is kind of puzzling. On a speed test using this SanDisk UHS-2 reader, so this has the extra pins, this has 17 pins in there for reading extra fast cards, UHS-2 cards. The write speeds between the four micro SDs performed mostly predictably. The faster cards gave faster reads and faster writes. After the uh, U1 and U3 speed classes, you get V30, V60, V90, and so those correspond to megabytes per second. This is a V60 card and a UHS-2 specification with the 17 pins. This card just doesn't perform in the Inspire 2. On that graph, you'll see the performance is worse as the cards get faster. The only benefit of having a super fast card is if let's say you have this UHS-2 card and you have it and it's full and you need to dump that to your machine. If you stick it in the super fast reader, you'll get a really good read speed off of that card and you'll be able to dump that faster. Dumping that whole card, you'll cut a transfer time of 15 minutes down to 11 minutes. So if saving four minutes on transferring a micro SD card is gonna make a big difference in your life, go ahead and pick up a UHS-2 micro SD because it won't make any difference to the Inspire 2. So the V60 card writes 12% faster in my Nikon D600 here. So I pop these micro SDs into my, my bigger camera, my stills camera to see if they actually perform better because it's weird to have great performance in the computer and have poor performance in the Inspire 2. I was wondering, maybe I got a dud card, but the faster the card, the better it performed, as you can see in the graph in the D600. So the Inspire is is by itself. It's out and alone. It just causes problems with faster cards. So the X7 with the U3 card came back just a little bit faster than the X5S. Usually a 16 or 32 with the U3 uh, UHS-1 specification would be my number one recommendation. Albeit double the capacity of the V30, the V60 card cost me $70 while a standard card like the one I mentioned uh, that's only a U3 comes in at like a quarter of that price. So these things, these cards are just so small. Honestly, I don't think they're worth spending more than about $30 on. I just buy a bunch of U3 cards and get a good case for them. If you have lens caps, like body caps, front and back, you can just put them together and they make a great holder for micro SDs. Put that in your Inspire case and just forget about it. This goes for Mavics, Phantoms, anything like that. They all use micro SDs. You're not gonna get any gain because the bit rate of the video is the same. Just get a bunch of the same card and forget about it. Just carry on to more important things. So that's about it. Our next video is a more in-depth exploration of using two controllers with the DJI Inspire 2. A lot of you had some good questions and comments on the last one. When this video is done, I'll put them right over here on the end screen and I'll put a link in the description. Thank you for watching. My name is Arden Chibley for Yellow House Aerial. Click that subscribe button if you found this useful and I'll see you in the next video.